We are back with another Not So PG podcast. And today I am back with a very, very special guest. He's been on a couple times. My good friend, the Garrett Nolan, or as you may know him. Good to see you, man. Catman, or now as a well, world-renowned actor, garnering millions and millions of views online with his incredible acting ability and way to capture people's emotions through really thought-out content that I am inspired by every time I see it. So how are you doing today, Garrett? You ready? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I love to hear it. So I want to have today's episode be really leveled on relationship advice and more from the female perspective. I feel like women don't get enough love for how they are in relationships today. And I feel like men could be assholes. And not to be those guys that are like, oh, all men are assholes. But listen, a lot of us are. A lot of us have messed up. Even I've, I've messed up. I'm sure you've messed up. I know you've Certainly. messed up. You've told me yourself. Certainly. We've all made mistakes. <laughs> but today yeah. I kind of want to focus on how, how men could be better. Not only in the Excellent. bedroom, yeah. but in their relationship. How they could be more open with their emotions. Because I think, for starters, men have trouble showing as much emotion as women do in relationships. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even for men that might deny that, I think deep down it's a, it's a universal thing for all men. Yeah. 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 And I think that a lot of men struggle with this, with the emotion in relationships, because a lot of the times your girl will come to you with a problem that'll just be very emotional. And at first hand for a lot of guys, it won't, the problem she has with you or with the relationship, it won't really resonate with you as a, as a valid argument, right? Right. Which could be hard for a lot of guys to accept, but you have to not look at the problem she's bringing up, but the emotion behind it, right? How is she feeling? And a lot of guys forget to focus on that part. How, how is she feeling? What's the emotion that she has right now that's, that's bothering her? Yeah. Rather than not adhering to her thoughts, adhering to her problem of like, this isn't like literal, like what are we doing here? This isn't like, I'm not fighting about this. What are you upset about? Why is this emotion coming up for you and how can we attack it? You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, is there any reasons that you think that that is the phenomenon that men and women have that dynamic? I think that men and women are just completely different creatures. I think that men think that every situation, every fight has to be settled. And these are the facts. This is what happened. How do we move on from here? And I think a lot of guys, including myself, fall into the problem of that's not always going to fix a problem with a woman because women think in a different way. Yeah. They think emotionally. I'm upset and I need you to comfort me right now. I need you to tell me this is like, this is never going to happen again. Not, we already solved this. I told you that I told you what happened. Let's move forward. They need, they need reassurance. They need you to attack that emotion with reassurance. And a lot of guys just don't understand that. Even if it's something that keeps coming up, like a lot of girls will go to their boyfriend and, and repeat things. And if your boyfriend's telling you, um, you know, why do you keep bringing this up? Why do you keep bringing the yeah. past up? It's like, she's, she's trying to get over this emotion that you've wronged her. Right. Not, not so much right, right. the problem, not so much what had happened, but that if it was the other way around, you know, you wouldn't be okay with it. And they just can't come to accept that. So like, that's what I mean by like in these fights and relationships, a lot of guys don't know to attack the emotion rather than what's being said, understand where the emotion's coming from. Right. I, to, to play off of what you're saying and you can agree or disagree with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that one of the, the stark differences between a man and a woman, especially in their relationship, is that uh, it's almost natural for a man to dismiss their woman's uh, feelings and emotions easily because from a very young age, men are indoctrinated to not think on feeling, mm -hmm. like what you're saying. Um, men, I think, are, are designed by society to think based off of logic. And uh, you really have to... That's a part of maturing as a man in this life is kind of washing away what this, this society has placed on us. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, to, to place our feeling back into the relationship with our woman and yeah, that it goes deeper than logic as crazy as oh that. Oh my sound, gosh. Yeah. It goes into playing into emotion. Females are very emotional creatures. And I don't know. I think that, I think that it, it the way to fix it is be as a, being a man is touching more into your own emotional side. Yeah, yeah, right. Of because if you could attack that with your partner and being more open with your own emotions, I feel like it'll it'll give you a better understanding of how a woman's mind thinks. And and to be clear, I don't think neither either one of us are saying that women um, 
are more emotional and men are less emotional. I think that men just are less inclined to touch to their emotional yeah. side. Do you think that's societal? Do you think that's how we're raised or do you think that's just natural? I would say that it's probably a play of all fields, right? Yeah. There's probably a lot of, of genetic coding and societal things, most definitely. Yeah. I think play the largest factor of what makes a man and defines their masculinity for them. Uh, so, yeah. Because hmm. for me, I've always been naturally very emotional guy since I'm young. Right. I was always crying. <laughs> like, no, I, it, likewise. As, like, whereas, like, I, I had a twin. I have a twin who was the opposite. Like, even in baby pictures, like, I was always crying, being very emotional. And he was just like, why is this other dude crying? Anyways, I've always been very emotional. And I've always wondered why that was. Like, that I was this emotional kid. And then my twin was just the opposite. He didn't, he didn't care much for emotion. Hmm. Like he wasn't like, like I, I always, as a kid needed the reassurance. I always needed to feel something where it's like, I feel like it's kind of generalized that guys don't feel emotion as much as women. Like you're, like you were saying, right? Like it's not that all women are more emotional than men. Yeah. <laughs> She's very emotional, <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think? What do you think? Do you think you you've, you're more emotional than the average guy? Because I know I am, for a fact. Uh, absolutely. I think that the fact that we're, both you and I are sitting um, in this room and performing what we're performing now, or, or whatever you want to call it, yeah, um, entertaining, I think that a lot of creatives and the industries that we're in, as far as, you know, um, whether it's an influencer or acting, any type of creative um, pursuit, mm -hmm. I think comes from a very emotionally expressive background. Um, I'm guessing, I'm not sure what your twin does for a living, but it's probably quite the opposite of what you do, right? Well, yeah, he's an HVAC mechanic. So uh, yeah. Quite the opposite. He's this. probably very like constantly thinking in his brain of how he can manipulate things with his job, you know, of yeah. hands on, but you're, I know who you are personally and you are so creative. You can pull things from your brain and make them come to life um, in a different way. on a screen yeah. or, or in a performance. And that's. I think we're all just wired a bit differently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I actually found out something funny. I, I think I've, I've spoken about this on the podcast before about why I think I was always so emotional growing up. Like I I felt, and to be very open about this, like I was a very depressed kid, very anxious. And I, I, I didn't know why. I was like 10, literally 10 and just would be crying in bed, not knowing why. Yeah. And my mom would literally say to me, she's like, Peter, you're like, you get good grades, because this was important when you're 10. She's like, you get good, 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 good grades in school. We're proud of you. Like, you're good looking. Like, you have nothing to be sad about. Like you have a family that loves you. And like, I remember like taking and like processing this and being like, yeah, like I, I, I am all those things. Like, why am I sad? And I never knew for so long. And then I was watching this other podcast and I was just wondering if this kind of associated back to me because it was the same situation where this guy went down to the Amazon, did an ayahuasca trip. For those of you at home that don't know, ayahuasca is a psychedelic drug that can bring up a lot of emotional tension in that, and people that have been through trauma that don't remember their traumas can be shown this trauma that they went to to remind them so they can deal with what happened. So this guy goes and does it. He, he is the same situ situation, had no idea why he had anxiety, had no idea why he was depressed. And in this trip on ayahuasca, it showed him his birth. He was born with the cord wrapped around his neck. So, and wow. it showed him that he had this traumatic birth and there's something called post-traumatic, uh, post-birth trauma that you, you don't remember this right, right. horrific way you came into this world but your body and your mind kind of still have this remembrance of it, right? And he went to his mom and he was like, was I born with the cord wrapped around my neck? And she was like, how do you know that? So it's like, he yeah. didn't even know his whole life that it happened and this trip showed him. Wow. And I was like, wait a second. I know I was born with the cord wrapped around my neck. I know that I had this traumatic birth. Being that I have that same situation where I don't know why I'm depressed, why I'm anxious, could that be why I am? Right. So, yeah, so kind of yeah. after that, I was kind of like 50, 50 on it. And then I had my own experience with mushrooms to yeah. be blunt. And I remember thinking about it and I wasn't on enough that I was seeing it happen, but I was kind of having like this internal remembrance of it. And I just, bro, I just cried. Like I remember crying, the situ like crying about the situation. And the next day I woke up. And I thought there was something wrong with me. 
And I was like, what's wrong with me? I don't feel right. Like I thought like the mushrooms broke my brain. I'm driving to the gym about like an hour later after waking up. And I'm like, oh, this is what normal people feel like. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't, this is what not having anxiety. Because I was so used to my whole life waking up and just feeling instant anxiety, right? Feeling this instant depression right. and thinking like I had to wake up and worry about something. But the fact that I woke up and I was just still, I, I thought there was something wrong with me. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, because I used to always downplay it, like, stop being a bitch. Like, as, a, as a, you'd say to yourself, as a guy, like, why, why are you depressed? Like, no, right. you're not. Yeah. But I, when, I, when I finally felt just not having it, I was like, oh, no, I had something, there was something wrong with me. There was, like, I had a serious problem with my mental health. And it was the first time in my life that I just was cool. And it was just a surreal experience. My and God, I was like, I guess, I guess that's what it was. I guess it was this traumatic <laughs> birth experience. Yeah, you know... Do you think that trauma itself suppresses or, or maybe gives out your emotional side? I think that it does a mixture of the two. I think there's a problem with a lot of people that have trauma at an early age, even not as early as, as I think I had it, but even like at 10, 12, 15, like, and they just don't remember what happened to them. It yeah. happens to a lot of people because their brain suppresses it right. and they don't want to deal with those problems. And I think that keeps people in a bad place for a very long time. And I think that either through therapy or for some people, psychedelics, if you're, if you're open to it, I think it could help you face those problems that at some point I feel like you have to do. Truly. Yeah. You know, and obviously everyone's trauma is a little bit different. Um, but I, that's something that I think is very interesting. I think the idea that you can forget something. So for me, it's different. I was, it was during my birth. Understandable. I don't remember it. But for some people, I, I've heard stories where they're of a pretty ripe age and they were like, I didn't remember this happened to me. Yeah. Fully not in my brain, didn't even remember this happened to me, which wow. I think is insane. Wow. You know? You had no recollection until that, until you did the psychedelic. No, I always knew it happened to me. Yeah. You know, but it wasn't until I heard about this other guy's experience that I was like, oh, yeah, now you maybe understand. this is what happened to me. Right. Because again, like, no reason to be depressed or anxious. And like, I would battle you. And I wasn't even one of those people that would kind of mope in his own sadness. Be like, oh, I'm sad. Like I would literally talk to myself like, dude, what? you're not sad. Stop saying you're sad. Like what? But it was just, that's why there's a lot of people that try saying like, like the Andrew Tate of the world that are just like, just say you're not, just say you're not depressed yeah, and you're yeah. not. And that's like, I did that, man. I tell, I said, you're not depressed. Guess what? It was still there. Right. And it's like, I think that if you, it's also because there's a buildup of, of also putting it in your brain for so long that you are depressed. And it's hard to just also just rebound that by saying you're not. But I also do think there's a lot of power in your words. So I don't think it – at the same time, while I don't think just saying you're not depressed fixes it, I do think that it hurts you by continuing to elaborate on how sad you are and how depressed you are. Which leads me to another thing where it's like a lot of people say therapy is not good because it's keeping you in the state of talking about I'm sad, I'm depressed. And you keep coming back week after week talking about these emotions when you should be trying to deflect them with more positive emotions. The only time that I think that you, you, you should be in therapy, which is what people fight back with me and say, this is what it's for is to battle those traumas, to battle these issues that you're having internally yeah. and to face them. But once you face it, there is healing there that you don't need to go back to it. You don't need to keep coming back saying I'm depressed. I'm anxious. Does that, does that make sense? Obviously it's very, it's more open than that. People, everyone's got a different situation. Yeah, but do you course. get where I'm coming from with that? I do. It's just as you were saying it, I was thinking of I myself have experienced therapy. Um, but I was thinking about my experience with it. And it wasn't um, – not, the, not that the therapists weren't perfect at their job. I just – it wasn't for me. Um, I wasn't able to get the clarity or the methods needed to take care of what I was going through with it. Um, mm -hmm. So – yeah, my problem was I always thought I was smarter than the therapist. Like, they would tell me some shit that, like, I could have told myself, I felt like. But right. I feel like you can find the right person for you. I think there's some people that are natural emotional heal healers on this earth and that they're made for that job. I think some people just got the degree and did it, right? Certainly. Because I yeah. ran into a guy that did help me, and he gave me a lot of really great advice. So for anybody out there that's, like, tried a therapist, you know, like, it's not for me. Even for you, like, I'm sure, like, maybe you do know, like, therapy's not for you. But, like, I used to think the same thing. But I did meet one guy once that really did help me. And I don't know. I feel like just having somebody outside of your 
internal world that has no leeway in your life to be able to vent to that person and they legally can't repeat it. I think for a lot of people can be a safe space. For oh them. my gosh. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And, and, and with that safe space, you almost know what you're getting into when you step into that room. Yeah. You're going into a place that the expectation is that you're, that you're there to get healed. Um, yeah. As opposed to just trying to release your trauma onto a stranger. You don't know how that's going to be interpreted with someone yeah. or, or taken. So a large issue that I want to attack, I think in like my, my overall goal in this lifetime is to help people with their mental health. I feel like so many people are depressed, anxious. Like it's, it's cause it's something that I went through for a very long time. And I, why do you think that we're at a state where mental health is one of the biggest issues in this country? Like, what do you think got us here? That this is, this is the problem. Like, this is, this is our, the situation we're in where literally half of people, more than half of people, I believe, claim to have anxiety or depression. I mean, a very quick, you know, I think degradation of like, of community. Um, mm. There's not really community anymore. I mean, my true only friends in this entire city of Los Angeles are, are three people right in here. Yeah. I mean, there's millions of people here. Yeah. And I feel like if you were to walk the streets in the 50s during, uh, in Hollywood, um, it'd be a much different experience. And it wasn't perfect, but... Do you think technology's to blame? I think that's a large piece of it. Yeah. I mean, certainly. And then it's not to say of how many benefits that it's done, but you almost have to look at it on the scale and say, uh, how many benefits is it worth if it's going to you know, decline your entire human experience. You know what I mean? If, if you're going to get 10 benefits and cut out a hundred. Yeah. I feel like you need it for the advancement of society. Like we're so connected. We're more connected than ever. Cause there's a lot of good things that come from social media. There's a lot of people with healthy lifestyles that have a lot of great things to share that are more vocal to the world now because of, but at the same time, people are addicted to their phones and they don't realize they're addicted. That's the issue. Nobody realizes that they're addicted. It's an addiction. I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah, I am. <laughs> like, and I think that you're getting these quick dopamine hits that weren't possible in the past. Every time you scroll on TikTok and I feel like people, it's just a depletion of dopamine and people are just sad. And to tie this back into our earlier conversation about, you know, masculinity yeah. and, and what it means to be a man, I think that that social media and, and the, and the, pure just grasping your hand yeah. of all this information um has made it very hard for people to to define what being a man or a woman is to them or you know for all sense purposes how to have a healthy relationship yeah. i mean porno pornography alone um i'm only speaking for myself um, and i've been an adult film i have a very large respect for it because of that yeah but i also know that the overstimulation of it at the rate that i mean kids have it you know what i mean like 14 year old kids have it access to easily it, is um is alarming one and two that's probably a reason that there's so much depression yeah. there's so much grain in men's brain of like is this what i should be spending my time doing is this what a man should be it's focusing like, it's, on... it's another addiction. I don't think people have as much control over it. Like once yeah. you have access to that and you're used to just getting this quick dopamine hit at the end of the night, it's like, you almost can't stop. I, I stopped because I, I realized it was, it would affect me negatively. I realized that I'd wake up the next day and I'd be yeah, off mentally after watching personally myself. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know what it is about it, but I know for a fact that pornography, at least what I could say for the male brain, experiencing it myself is not good for you. I don't think, I, I don't know why seeing people in that way is not good for you, but I know that it affects you. I mean, they've done, they've done scientific testing now. They know that it's not great for your, your wiring up there. Right. You know? So I don't know. I think that, I don't, I don't think you make it illegal. I think, you know, this is a free country, but I, I like something that uh, they did in Utah where you can't access pornography unless you um, insert a valid ID that shows you're of age to watch it, which That's I think a very powerful, I think move. that people aren't treating the internet like real life when the internet is more than real life. It's, we have more access to information to talk to people. Like even when it comes to freedom of speech, it's like, Oh no, here we could cut your freedom of speech on the internet. Cause we own the platform. It's like, 
this is more real than the real world. I think that we should keep the same ideas and rules that we have for real life on the internet. Truly. So that's why I think it's a good idea. I don't see why you wouldn't need to put your ID into going to porn websites because God for, because we we know kids have phones today, yeah. right? So I think there's ways to attack this that makes it safe for at least kids growing up. But I think for adults, I think it's just about recognizing, you know, what you're doing, right? And and at least admitting you have a problem and trying to take a step back. Certainly. But moving away from that, I want to kind of go back to the relationship stuff. Do you think, what do you think you should do as a man if a girl hits you up flirting with you and you have a girlfriend? How do you, like, what's the first thing you do? So I'm going to answer this in from two different timelines of my life. Yeah. Because I'm in a completely different, you know, period of my human existence than yeah. I was five years ago. So I'm 26 now. And the way that I would deal with this is I would snuff it out immediately and, and, and break contact of whoever that person is. You don't respond. I would not respond. You don't give a simple thank you. I, I know a lot of guys do. I would, I would immediately block them because I've done that before in the mm -hmm. past. I've allowed to be gracious enough. You know, on the surface, I was telling myself, I'm just being a good guy. This is yeah. being a good man is just giving this girl. You don't want to hurt her feelings. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I want to be, and eventually deep down, you know, in my soul, I knew what I was wanting. And I was wanting the attention of that woman. But now I've defined my masculinity as one word it's the easiest way to live my life and it's consideration exactly to be considerate is to be masculine in my eyes yeah if it's he if he can't hurt another girl's feelings to protect yours he's not yours you right. know what i mean yeah and because like certainly. i've been on the other side of things i've been in a relationship where i thought it was great like i never have to worry about anything and then like i'll see a dm of a guy calling her cute yeah and her being like even like a simple thank you, but like, still, it's like, I remember like having that conversation, like, well, why did you respond to that? You know what I mean? Like, what, like, what, what was your, like, why did he need to thank you for that? Right. Like you're with me. Like why, like to make him not feel bad. Like, I don't, I like, so like, I, I just remember, I'm kind of happy it happened to me in a past relationship so I can know what it feels like. Like, oh yeah. Like why would she respond to that? And that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. I, I could understand why it would. That girl ended up cheating on me. So lesson learned. Sorry but. about that, brother. But also, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that it, it's it's maybe put a nail in in your your infrastructure of who you're becoming now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you're, you're you're growing into one of the most amazing dudes that I know. I I've appreciate you. And I, it's been a pleasure to like to it's meet you. Man. I mean, we're. We're best friends for all, for all I know. So I think, I think kind of back to the fighting thing, we kind of spoke about how the female reacts, right? Okay. With emotion, yeah. right? Yes. I kind of have an idea about like men, a lot of men, I feel like, like to react with, with rage. And I feel like if he, if the guy, right? Like if the guy reacts with anger, calling you names, yelling, you got to remember that's him showing the real side of him. That's him showing how he really feels about you. You know what I mean? Like if, if he can't keep his cool in a fight and be respectful and keep to the point, keep to that logic we said at the bare minimum, even if he's not attacking just emotion, right? Truly, yeah. I think that if he can't keep his cool in a fight, if you're, if you're in a, a relationship, which I don't even want to say abusive, maybe it's not abusive, but that he just can't keep his cool. And he, like I said, he calls you names. He's mean. I think that shows how he really feels about you. You know, I think it says more about his feelings towards you and who he is than the, the current situation. Yeah, I, I think that it goes back to just, and it's a, such a hard concept to grab for, I think, every man. But yeah. to be considerate is a really hard thing to master as a man. To, to think most men, until they, they make enough failures with their woman, don't see the, um, the effects of their actions. They just do not. And, but once you have a harness of that, you can, you can become so obsessive with the consideration that you have for your woman in a way where the way that you walk, the way that you speak, the way that you, you wake up in the morning or prepare food for your woman or mm -hmm. the simple gestures, everything becomes considered and almost becomes like a second nature for you. Yeah. And that's what makes you become a really good man. 
I agree. I kind of like see, like I try to pride myself in the fact that like when I do get into fights with a significant other, I like I keep my cool. But I will admit, like we've all been there. We've all had our yeah. moments where we break. She's yelling, you're yelling, but keep. It's good to keep those as rare and few that you can count them on one hand. That's something like that does happen. Yeah. I want to move on to a uh, more fun topic, and it's how to catch them cheating. There's a new way. I saw this on X. Oh wow! All right. You ever see like those uh, those fake text messages app that you could send from a normal number? Uh, yeah. Like a random yep. number you could text somebody. So take one of those fake text message apps, text them from a random number, and say, "I think you're talking to multiple people. Who is this? If you're not, say my name. If you're not, oh, and if he wow. can't text back saying." This is Jessica, or this is whoever it is. He's talking to multiple people. That's pretty. Someone, clever. someone posted it, going, "What do I do?" And it was the girl from the <laughs> fake message going, "I'm using the fake text app." Uh, oh god! I think you're talking to other people. Who, like, who am I if you're not? And he was like, "I can't respond," because <laughs> he obviously was. <laughs> I think that's really funny. Let me ask you a question: What's one thing that you love as a man in the bedroom that you think is kind of falling off today? That you think more men should be into, more guys should be doing? Oral sex. Eating <laughs> pussy. Immediately, that's the answer. But not just the act of it. Yeah. The entire performance. should You, you should literally treat eating fucking labia, pawns, yes, clitoris, every, <laughs> every piece, even inner thigh, as, as this, like, orchestral event. I, I agree, man. I don't... I really don't know what's wrong with guys today. They don't. I've had guys tell me they don't eat. They don't eat pussy. That they don't do it. And I've I've had girls tell me that they'll say, "Yeah, my my ex would go down on me, but be no more than fifteen seconds until he would just come up and then start." Yeah. Inserting into me, it's like, okay, well, you're not going to get anything done in fifteen seconds. I'm sorry. I don't care how good you are. <laughs> you're not. Yeah. Things take time, especially when you're. Working with such a, a beautifully intricate, intricately designed, like, oh, I just, I, I love it. Before the podcast started, I was ready with that question because Garrett was looking in the mirror over there and he was going, you know what I miss? I miss eating pussy. And I was like, save it for the podcast. I do. I <laughs> so really, that's why he got so into it. Like my, I, I could feel my eyes dilate saying that too, because Peter knows I've been celibate for way too long now. I'm doing good. But I looked in the mirror over there for a second and I was not doing good because I saw my eyes. And right when I saw my eyes, all I saw was just the, the act of, I see it again. Yeah. But the act of, of eating pussy. Moving on. Have you ever been with a girl that has an IUD? Yes. I've spoken about this before. And, yeah. I was, and my little brother was like, Can't, like, can you feel it? And I was like, absolutely. I felt it. All the comments were hating on me. You can't feel it. You can't reach in there. And I was like, <laughs> you can. You can. So then I did a little more research because I know I felt something. And apparently it's the string that's hanging down you could feel. Yes. So yep. I wanted to elaborate that. You can feel an IUD. It's just the string that's kind of hanging down a little bit low. But it hurts. It feels like a, like a hard metal you're hitting. It's not very comfortable. I... I find it pleasing in some shape or form only because it's wait, just an IUD you find pleasing. Well, not pleasing, but it's a nice little surprise at the end, you know, at the end. What the fuck are you talking about? What you, what you For think? another day. Do you know what an IUD is? Or are you just saying shit? I'm just saying shit. <laughs> yeah. Do, wait, do you not know what an IUD is? There's no way you just went along with this conversation. No, I know. No, I do know what it is. What is it? It's a fucking contraceptive that's up inside. Okay, so why'd you just say it's a, it's a surprise at the end? The end of the tunnel. <laughs> like, everything's going great, and then you just get a surprise. Just for being there. Okay. Now, if you're with a girl... There's nothing wrong with it. It's great. No, it's great. If you're with a girl that has an IUD, do you, do you finish inside? I should not admit what <laughs> I'm about to dying. admit. Feel free to laugh, Al. So... <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Yeah. I, this is only in in the very committed and and the relationships that I saw a future that c 
could possibly go to the end of my life, I would always finish inside. Every single time. Wait, with or without an IUD? With or without. You weren't worried about having a kid? No, because my my brain and and all the chemicals rushing, you know, through my body just they just speak speak to do that. <laughs> yeah, same Garrett, but I don't want a kid. If it happened, it would have happened. You know what? I respect it. That's the same shit I, I said. I would easily step up and be I a father that, I said on that an about- accidental term. I'm okay with that. I will be a great father under any circumstance that it comes about. Yeah, but I you're making that. this happen. Someone told me that you could still get a girl pregnant on her period. And I was like, okay, if I get her pregnant on her period, it's meant to be. I agree. If I get her pregnant on her period. I said that every time I had Because I'm not wearing a condom if you're on your period. Yeah. You know, would you... Would you, you wouldn't, I think I've asked you this. Would you ever not sleep with a girl if she was on her period? Ever not sleep with her? Yeah, like, would you not sleep with a girl just because she's on her period? Like, would you be like, ah, No, I wait. would never react like that. How would I, you react? I'd be excited about the situation, actually. I've always been excited. Why, I, would, why would you be excited? Because I feel that, specifically, a woman's, like, perineal blood coming from... Perineal, dude, what? what? From that area. What, what's, is that a word? Yeah, perineal is just the, the area right here. Okay. For all of us. So <laughs> the, cer- the blood coming from the cervix. Yeah. I truthfully believe that it has some divinity to it. I believe that it has healing um, I, components I agree with that. to it. I agree with that. And not only is it a belief, it's just something that I love to entertain and, and be a part of. I feel like there's such a connective thing that you get to share. I think that's how you create a soul tie. It could be. And... If it doesn't create a soul tie, it sure as hell creates a wonderful experience sexually. If I can't get my sword a little bloody, I'm not a good knight. I want to ask you a question. I have the perfect way to break up with somebody that cheated on you. Okay. I'm going to finish with this. And bear with me. It's toxic as fuck, but it's a great idea. What you're going to do if you catch them cheating, you're not going to let them know you caught them. You're going to eat a whole bag of Takis. You're going to go down on them one last time. <laughs> that would be truly... Done. <laughs> That's it. I feel like... Have you done this or no? No. Oh, okay. I don't think I'd, I'd get... I, I'm too emotional. I would tell them right away I caught them. Yeah. Me too. Me too. You know? I, I'm at the stage in my life where if someone cheated on me and I knew about it and they didn't know that I knew... I would just act like it's another day and when they're at work, I would move everything out of the house and just leave and never speak to them ever again. Yeah. Like, seriously. I, I, I'd react the same way. I'd be like, because I'm very good at cutting off my, my emotional I'm the same way. barriers right now. If I catch you cheating, it's, it's over. And you pr- probably because of your past experiences, you're like, it's already happened once. Ain't, there's no I f- way. That- I feel like once you get hurt by that person... No one could hurt you again. Can I ask you something quick? Go on. Sorry. It just came to my mind. Go and I it. wanted to ask. Do you think it's possible or have you ever, um, you were going down on a girl and you came just from going down on her? Without touching myself. Without. Well, we can add that in with, with touching yourself. I haven't. I'm sure I could if I wanted to. I'm but sure you could I wouldn't want to waste it before we got to the I next part. Have you? I I have, and I was trying not to waste it, but it it happened anyways. I could not help myself. That's how much I love going down. I'm and the same much, way, dude. How much I know. I hope you guys had an amazing, amazing time watching us talk about things. Let us know your favorite parts. Share with a friend. Like, comment, subscribe. That has been a not so PG podcast. We will see you on the next one. Adios. See you later, y'all.